everyone, this is Michelle with Evolution Productions and ProVideoGo.com. Um, today we are looking at the AV Matrix PV0615 portable all in one switcher. This little guy is a little bit bigger than a laptop. We're going to check it out for you right here and now. Okay, before we get started, I just wanted to show you the backs and sides of the AV Matrix switcher. So here is, you're looking at the right side, card slot for your SD card. I have a 64 in there right now. Uh, the landline is for pretty much software updates and setting your time clock at this point. Then you have a headphone out jack. Power supply in, which is kind of nice. It has the twist on. Uh, so it won't come on undone or dislodged. You have left and right in and out TRS three quarter jacks. You have two HDMI outputs. You have three SDI program outs. And the third output can be set to um, to take your preview screen and output that as an aux. So you could actually output two different sources if you if you do it properly. Otherwise, if you don't set it up that way, they all are going to take your program out. You have four SDI in slots. And then inputs five and six have uh, multiple different inputs you could choose from. So you could have HDMI in, you could have DVI in, or if you go around to this side, you could do USB, USB player in. Uh, what that gets you is uh, the ability to store <clears throat> image files, so logos store, maybe a lower thirds. Um, you could also store a movie file on that, so you could play a movie right from your USB stick. So you can choose, again, inputs five and six, you have three options to choose from. And then you have your multi-viewer out, which you also have a multi-viewer already in the unit. So that, that would be an extra, excuse me, an extra multi-viewer out. And then a tally uh, for your cameras if you choose to use it. Let's take a look at the screen. I'm gonna clear off the key here so you can see it better. And then let's just go over it. So here we go, this is a preview program. We have one, two, three, four SDI inputs. And we have two HDMI inputs that are changeable. They can be either HDMI, DVI, they can be USB. So you have the option to change these um, depending on what your needs are. Right now I have HDMI camera here on the keyboard and I have uh, I have a graphic in the USB stick that's on the side. So there are two slots for USB sticks um, that you can load. You could either load graphics or you could load video and switch between the two. So that is pretty cool, great for graphics store. Um, then we have a little glow clock and a little status uh, window here that tells you what is going on. So let me uh, get a little closer in on the clock and status button here, uh, window here. And here you can see that um, what you're looking at channel one, channel two, three, earphone. This is our audio mixing. So uh, I have the option of taking channel one, as you see, uh, actually look at channel two. Right now it's input six and I'm changing it here uh, to TRS. That's, that's another way we can get audio in uh, if you have an external audio board or some kind of external audio, we can bring it in TRS. Um, and so you can change this to any input. Um, any of those three can change to any input. So it's it's a, a very nice and I will, uh, let's take a look at, a closer look at that real quick here. There we go. So here are your in three inputs and then this is how you change the source um, and your master and then if you wanted to pre-listen to that, that's how that works. So it's, it's really pretty cool. Oops, and go back to the full screen here with our PGZ optics camera, the robotic camera here. Um, let's go on and take a look at the keyboard. And this is part of the keyboard. Right now we are recording right to the 
right to the recorder with a, excuse me, with an SD card in the side. Uh, it takes a 64 megabit card, class 10. Uh, it records, it'll follow your output of your switcher, which is, it's going to be either 1080i or 1080p in all the various uh, frame rates. So uh, it will follow that, but you are, you, there is an option to change your megabits per second, how, how it records and what quality. Um, so there are four settings for that. Um, and the highest is 25 megabits per second. The lowest is six. So it's pr pretty nice that you have those options. Um, you can pause this record if you wanted to, so you, uh, if something was going on, it won't break up the file. It will just keep recording, then you can re-hit that, and it'll just follow right along here. Um, this has all the transitions you 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 like, your your typical transitions here. Um, you know, let's just go ahead and take, oh, there's a cut. Let's get into auto wipe. We have typical transitions here. And then we'll go back to there we go um, yeah very very simple that I mean it's very easy to use these are um, you, these two little buttons here this is how you pick your input for those two five and six uh, inputs that I was talking about uh, so let's let's take a look at this a little bit better like this okay now you can see five and six so right now six um, I can change this input so I have six highlighted, and I just hit the button there once, and you can see it went to DVI, VGA. I don't have these in, but um, you could if you had them. Uh, you couldn't use them all at once, of course. And then back to the USB, um, and then, then you can change that image. And I, I think I have four of them stored here. Uh, really good for logo store. Yep, there we go. And then you can also change it to video. So I'm going to take take it here and bring up the video I have saved and let me just bring it uh, there there it is that is the actual video that I took uh, from twitch there just to borrow for this purpose um, and then we can take that back and now we're back into yeah back into our, our graphic store which is fantastic all right, let's go on down to the T-bar. Here we go, I'll get my head out of the way. So we have a full T-bar. Look at that, I love that. There's just nothing like it. Um, you have fade to black. This button here is a two function buttons that you can program. Uh, right now I have this, as you see that just froze. Uh, F2 I, I don't have set up yet, uh, so those are two programmable buttons. Uh, we have picture in picture option here. We have picture outside of picture option, which is really nice for those, let's say you have a, a presenter and they have a PowerPoint. There you go, you got them both right at the, right at the same time. It's fantastic. Uh, we have Luma key, which, there we go, and uh, Chroma key, which isn't set up, but yes. Uh, so we got those, we got those, um, let's go back to the main screen, okay, and actually let's look at all the keys here at once so you can just kind of see them, I'll get my head out of the way. Uh, this also has all this uh, written up here so people, uh, if they don't know what they're doing, <laughs> it's kind of got instructions just kind of written right into it here. So um, what you're looking at here is, is the menu, status menu, and this is what it will show um, in normal operation mode. Uh, we already went through the audio channels and how that works. Um, I'd like to show you, I'm going to do a little side-by-side -side action here. So you can see, here's the button that I'm pushing to get to this menu. So right now, if that's the way it sets, right, since I hit the POP button, this new menu came up. So let's just run through that real quick. Um, Here's the window that you're working on, window one or window two. So we get that, uh, we can go down to the position, click once, and move window two. You can see it's moving there. So it can go side by side. Uh, I'm sorry, move sideways, it can move up and down. Uh, border enable on, or you could turn it off. 
Border width goes from two to seven. There's seven, there's two. Different color borders, white, red, blue, green, and back to white. And then if you were to do the same, whoops, that one just gotta go this way. Number one, it'd be the same. You can change all the positioning on that one as well. So now we're gonna clear, I'm gonna clear that. And we're gonna go into the PIP menu and bring that in. And so this is all the same. You can uh, change the position of it, right? I guess we'll move it out of the way vertically. So you can see what you're doing here. It's so twisty of a knob to move it. Um, there's three different sizes here. So there's the small, there's the medium, and there's the large size. Um, I don't know the exact dimensions of that, um, but those are your options. Small, medium, and large. Again, with the border enable, the border width, those are the same as the other. We'll exit that, and we'll clear that PIP. The other options here is uh, Luma key. I just hit the Luma key, and I don't really have anything set up for this, so I can't really show you, but you can see that you can change the level. Um, and on the chroma key, you can change this to blue if you like. So it is uh, customizable in that area. We'll exit that. Um, we're going to go back to this one for a second so I can show you. Um, there's two function buttons here, one and two. The way you get into it is you're in the status menu and you're going to push once on the on the little button and you go into system settings this will give you a ch chance to change your language you can take your clock from analog to digital and let me see if I have this in here um, three I can show you there we go so if I take that now to digital that's what that looks like I prefer it here. And go back. Okay, so uh, the two function buttons that I was showing you have options you can choose. So let's look at this. I have it on freeze, um, which will freeze program and audio. So when you push that, if you have something going on, you need to change something, you don't want anything to change on screen, you can you can hold it with the freeze. Um, that's on the program, not on the preview. So if you turn it off, that's what that happens. You can turn it to have that button act as a PIP or act as a POP, Luma, or Chroma. Uh, to me that doesn't make a lot of sense because those buttons are already there. So I think they have more things coming in a future upgrade. Um, same thing with F2. Audio so, um, you can, uh, if you have a little delay, you can mess with that. And if you want your date on or off on the, on the menu, you can just turn that off. That'd be on the clock menu. Um, and that is that. Return there. Now we'll go to network settings. You can set this for uh, dynamic or you can put in your own IP address, however you like to do that. Record settings. There is four different settings here, so we can go, oops, let's go here. The low setting is six megabits per second. Medium is 12 megabits per second. High is 18. And ultra high is 25 megabits per second record rate. So um, the only thing on this is that the, um, the files are cut up into two gigabytes sections. So the higher your record <laughs> quality, the more often it's gonna splice those files up, um, which will just make it a little harder in the post to put them back together again. 
But other than that, it records really nicely. Um, I just used this on a show and, and the quality was pretty amazing and I, I recorded on the medium. Great. And, uh, and so it really does record nicely there. So let's just go return and then device info it just tells you your serial number. Okay, now let's go over the uh, USB media player. Uh, so th this is played off of the USB stick, which is in either five or six input. Um, and let's just refresh that. Um, here's number five, here's number six. In order to activate either one of those, um, you toggle through using this button here, five or six. So right now I have my uh, camera on six, so we'll leave that one alone. But if I wanted to use five, let's say it wasn't on, it was on DVI. So I would just push the button and toggle it through. VGA if you have an adapter. Um, HDMI, no, USB, that's what we want. Okay, so that's the first image on my USB stick. So in order to now utilize this, I have to make sure and, and, and enable it first. So it's in USB 5, so I have to enable that. And when I push that button, now it activates this player and all these buttons here. So that's activated. Let's go back. I'm going to go to the next image by pushing this button and the next and the next. And then, and that's it. And then it'll go back to the beginning. This also goes backwards. So if I wanted to though, well that's, that's how you access your pictures. Now, if I wanted to access the video, I have one video on here as well. I have to make sure that this is enabled, which it is. And then I hit the video button and it brings up the video and it automatically starts playing. So if I want, if I want to, I can, I can pause it. I can fast forward it after I unpause it fast forward it and it fast forwards um what was the number 32 times uh if you wanted to fast forward 32 times the speed you could do that um you could go backwards you could go to the end you could go to the beginning so what i would do is uh let's say we're back here on on our image and we have a video to roll, um, I would probably, as soon as I hit the video button, as soon as I see it load, I'd hit the pause. And then you could take it to program when you're ready um, and not have to worry about it loading. Okay, I do want to show you real quick. Let's go back to the um, images. I'm going to fast forward to this one, which will... Um, there you go. This will tell you what formatting is supported. So um, I've only tried MP4 for movies. I have tried JPEG and PNG for image files. And I do believe that the PNG uh, loads a little m more slowly. So I would suggest the JPEG image. I did not try the bitmap image on this. And I think that is all for this part. I mean, we really, really like this little device. Um, we're digging it, and we happen to have it available on our website at ProVideoGo.com. Uh, this retails for $26.99. Uh, our plan is to use it with one of our hardware encoders so we can stream to the web without a use of a PC or a Mac, and we can just stream it right out there. Just this machine, you show up, doesn't matter what they throw at you. Anyway, uh, we really like this and thanks for checking it out with us. Uh, let me know if you have any questions below and uh, we'll answer them for you. Hey, I forgot to mention that if you order from us, you also get this handy carrying case from AV Matrix. And check this out. It's got the uh, laser cut foam. It's a really nice case, not too heavy but durable and will protect and also comes with a tally connector. All right.
Cheers. Bye-bye.